Hi guys. I'm sorry, but I'm kind of annoyed already because I basically filmed this entire video already. But this little shit, shit stirrer <laughs> was not connected. So the sound was shite. So I'm gonna re-film all of this. Okay, let's start over again. So today uh, I'm going to talk about separating the art from the artist and basically why I am a hypocrite. I would love to sit here and say that I've never watched, uh, listened to or read something that a terrible, toxic, abusive or other type of bad person has ever made. And in doing so, I would not be a hypocrite. But the reality is that I am especially when it comes to movies and that is what i'm going to focus on today and the reason why i wanted to make this video is due to everything that has happened with johnny depp and amber heard and the things that are in the works of happening between angelina jolie and brad pitt and i do not ever want to support any of these people again except for angelina jolie of course she is the victim in her circumstance um but that does not mean that I'm not ever going to watch the movies that they have already made. Um, because some of them are my favorite movies. Uh, for example, Brad Pitt has been in some of my favorite movies of all time. I mean, he's in Seven and Fight Club and Meet Joe Black and Thelma and Louise and True Romance and Glorious Bastards in Three of the Vampire. Uh, what was said seven years into bed. I mean <laughs> He's been in some amazing movies that I absolutely love and I don't think I could ever Not love them or not watch them And the same thing I feel like is with um, Johnny Depp uh, Kevin Spacey, Mel Gibson, Mark Wahlberg, Alfred Hitchcock, Roman Polanski and even Stanley Kubrick to some some degree and of, oh, Jesus Christ, Woody Allen. And you basically can't watch any Hollywood movie that has been great. That, or not, that has been great in the past, or like this, 10 years ago, that Harvey Weinstein did not have a part in because he's been in produced, like he produced the Lord of the Rings movies, I think. I'm never not going to watch Lord of the Rings. I'm sorry, it's just not happening. But if he produced a movie today, I would not watch it. You know what I mean? Anyways, <laughs> um, all of these terrible men have been a part of amazing movies. And I know before anyone says anything about it, I know that women in this in industry has also been horrible, but they are in the minority. And I'm also talking about my own experience with movies that I love. So I'm going to talk about the people that have been part of movies that I love. And those people are 99% men. I'm sorry, there was just mail coming through the door and it scared me. <laughs> um, anyways. So for example, Amber Heard is someone that abused her partner, Johnny Depp. And I would not, not watch a movie of hers again. Uh, but I also don't have an emotional connection with her past movies because the only movie I've seen of her before all this came out was Aquaman and I didn't really like that movie anyway, so I'm not gonna watch it again. And I do have some example. Well, I could make this video about people in the music industry as well because some of my favorite artists have done things that I didn't really know about until recently, but I don't want to make this like... 40 minute video so I'm gonna focus on people in the movie industry and try to keep it kind of short and sweet and but I do wanted to make one example that kind of is the counterpart of someone in the film industry and that is Chris Brown and Woody Allen. Chris Brown I learned about him assaulting Rihanna when I was very very young so I hadn't had a chance to even listen to his music before I learned about those things. So I never listened to it and I still don't listen to it and I wouldn't support him today. The same thing is with Woody Allen that I learned about his incestual pedophilic actions before I, I think I'd saw, seen maybe one or two movies with my parents before I knew about it. But 
Jesus, I'm shaking my head so much. Um, but I learned about his actions before I fell in love with his movies. So I'm never, I don't think I'm ever going to watch his movies because the, everything I can think about when thinking about his movies is him. Yeah. Uh, so kind of the deal I have struck with myself that you may already have guessed is that I'm never gonna support a person's work again after the things that they've done has come out but I'm not gonna not watch the movies that they've already made and that I've fallen in love with. Um, so I'm not gonna go around watching movies they've already made that I, that I don't like just to do it, but I'm gonna watch the movies that I actually like that they've already made. So that's kind of the, I'm a hypocrite, but not, I'm not the point of hypocrite that I'm gonna keep watching everything they do until the end of their career. So I'm not gonna watch anything new, but I am gonna watch the old stuff. I thought I would go over some of the things that these people have done and the movies that I'm that I love and always gonna love and keep on watching with them. And I do have some notes over it because I <laughs> I haven't really memorized everything. So I'm gonna glance over my notes here. And we're gonna start with Brad Pitt. And he's I think everyone is aware already that he's been accused of not only being abusive towards his wife or ex-wife in this circumstance, Angela Jolie, but also towards their kids. And their kids have publicly distanced themselves from him and is only living with um, their mom, which I think is very telling. Um, but the thing that is not yet completely proven, I do believe her. So I, I believe that this has happened, but it's not factual yet. But the thing that is factual is that he worked with Harvey Weinstein after the fact that Angela Jolie told him that he sexually assaulted her. And that I would never forgive. I would, it, that would be the end of our relationship right then and there. That is just, that is horrible. Uh, and I've already gone over the movies that I love with him, so I'm not going to do it again. I'm gonna keep going to Johnny Depp and I know this is kind of a stingy one because it's very controversial to not love him at the moment. Um, and I'm gonna right off the bat say he did win his court case um, and that it was proven that Amber Heard assaulted him. But I also think that he assaulted her and I think that there's substantial evidence of it. I think they were abusive towards each other in a very abusive relationship. And the text messages that I saw kind of substantiated that. And I'm gonna read them verbatim because I think this is the most, one of the most disgusting things I've ever read. So he's texting with someone called um, Paul Bettany. And Paul is saying, uh, or no, Johnny says, to con first in this conversation, let's burn Amber, exclamation point, three times. Paul responds, having thought it through though, having having thought it through, I don't think we should ba burn Amber. She is delightful company and easy on the eye. Plus, I'm not sure she's a witch. We could, of course, try the English course of action in these predicaments. We do a drowning te test. Thoughts? NB, I have a pool. And Johnny Depp responds with, let's drown her before we burn her, exclamation point three times. I will fuck her burnt corpse afterwards to make sure she is dead, dot, dot, dot. Paul, my thoughts entirely, exclamation point. Let's be certain before we pronounce her a witch. I don't think there's any circumstance in which that kind of language is okay. Um, I'm gonna speak from my own experience again because that's all I really can do. And that is I've been assaulted and I've been sexually assaulted. And I would never wish that. I would never wish that upon the people. I wish them to be in jail. I wish them to hopefully be reformed. I'm, I don't have really high hopes for it, but I wish them to be in jail. 
that's where I wish them to be. I'm not of the opinion of eye for an eye. I probably would be if something happened to maybe my sister or my brother, then it, I would be a hypocrite again because when it comes to them, I'm completely... I don't have any morals when it comes to them, so... But when I'm speaking about myself and about others, I feel like that is such a medieval way of thinking. And I, and I can, of course, understand that if he's angry uh, because they're, she's abusive, I can understand why she's angry and why you could say like, oh, I wanna, I will, I wanna fucking kill her or I wanna, you know, beat her up the same way she's beating me up. But the way they're talking, kind of, they're ha they're like joking around about it. They're kind of like happy. They're laughing about it. That to me does not scream abuse with victim. That screams abuser to me. And he has also a very long history of being aggressive in past relationships against security guards and random people in clubs and he has smashed up hotel rooms and other things like that. And by the way, I am leaving links to all of this in the description of all the people. So just so you know, so I'm not just speaking out of my ass. <laughs> but anyways, uh, we're gonna move on, but the movies that I love that he's been in that I'm always gonna love and keep on watching are of course the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. The first one is one of my top 10 movies. Um, I kind of wanted to make a review on it on this channel because I think it's kind of a masterpiece. <laughs> I think it's really good. I also love Donnie Brasco, Chocolat, and basically all the Tim Burton movies he's been in and those are kind of a lot. Uh, anyways, we're gonna keep on going to Kevin Spacey and I'm gonna read this kind of verbatim because it's a lot and but I think everyone knows why Kevin Spacey is an awful person because he was first accused of sexually assaulting uh, Anthony Rapp when he was 14 and he is also an actor now but when he was 14 and Kevin was like 26, 27 uh, he excused himself by coming out as gay and having suppressed his gay emotions for so long because he had internal homophobia, internalized homophobia. And after this got outed, about 15 other men came out um, with similar accusations and he denied all of them. And in the court case between, but I'm gonna just say this first. I think when there's smoke, there's fire and 16 people saying that they sexually assaulted him. Anyways, there was a court case between him and Anthony Rapp and he pleaded not guilty and he won it. And the reason why I think, in my honest opinion, why he won it and that he has a big chance of winning all of them is that this happened 20 years ago, kind of. At least like 15, 15, 20, 15 to 20 years ago. So it's going to be really hard for these men to prove their accusations because it's basically going to be word, word against word. Uh, especially since a lot of men don't tell anyone what they've been through because it's such a stigma of men to not do so, which is horrible. So they probably didn't go to a doctor and get an examination and they probably didn't even tell anyone in their close family or friends or anyone. So, um, I mean, a lot of people lose their court case when they do have hard evidence. So of course, people that don't have any evidence are gonna lose. Um, so yeah, I think that's horrible and I do have movies that I absolutely love with him. I mean, Seven, The Usual Suspect, uh, American Beauty, uh, Jerry, A Time to Kill, and The Social Network, where he was a producer, are amazing movies that I have a very hard time of not watching again. But the same thing with Woody Allen is that I can't really watch his movies and not think about the things he has done either, because I did love him so 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 much before all this I, he was one of my favorite actors so this it was a very big shock for me that he had done these things so i do find it 
kind of hard watching his movies. We're going to move on to Mel Gibson. And Mel Gibson has struggled with alcohol and drug abuse uh, for a long, long time. And that has, uh, ex that has resulted in a few D DIYs, which I think is a very selfish action because a lot of innocent people that has nothing to do with your shit could get hurt. And so I absolutely hate that. He has also made a lot of homophobic, sexist, racist, and anti-Semitic remarks in private that got outed, of course, because everything comes out eventually. And more seriously, has been he has been very abusive towards his ex-partner, both mentally and physically. However, there are movies that he's made or been a part of that I find really difficult to cut out of my life. And... The big one is Braveheart. I think he even directed that movie. And the Lethal Weapon movies. Um, the three the three Lethal Weapon movies. Um, and he, I mean Mad Max. It's, it's, it's hard not to watch them. Um, he's also in The Bounty, which I like. Uh, and Science. And Science is also with Joaquin Phoenix. And it, it's not like a fantastic movie. But it's, it has uh, a lot of sentimental value to it um we're gonna go right to the next one and that is roman polanski and he's a director who has made a lot of great movies and this guy is horrible as well he was accused of sexually assaulting a 13 year old girl and he took a plea bargain where he pleaded guilty to doing so <laughs> which is someone who is innocent who would never agree to a plea bargain where they admit or where they plead guilty to sexually assaulting a 13 year old girl if you didn't do it that is just i cannot believe anyone would do that if they're innocent and um, but there was always also rumors rumors that the judge would not take the plea bargain into account and still sentence him to 50 years in prison so what did he do? He fled the country. I think first to the UK and then to France. So he just... That is guilty ass behavior. I'm sorry. It is. And the movies that I love and always gonna love and keep on watching are um, The Pianist, uh, Rosemary's Baby, uh, Chinatown, Frantic, and uh, Rush Hour. He has made Rush Hour, so gonna be really hard not to watch these movies okay we're moving on Woody Allen Woody Allen is such a pathetic disgusting horrible man he groomed his ex-partner's daughter so his stepdaughter he groomed her I'm just gonna fix my there we go he groomed her when he was 62 and she was 21 no, I'm sorry. They married when he was 62 and she was 27. Uh, but their official sexual relationship, officially, started when she was 21 and he was 56. There's also been accusations against him sexually assaulting his other stepdaughter at the age of 7. And all of these things happened in the 90s, in the 90s, in the 1990s, all of this came out and he married his stepdaughter and all of that. Despite of all of that, he continued to make movies up until 2019. He got, he, he got rewards for his movies up until 2013. And in 2014, he won a, re <laughs> he won a reward for like lifetime achievements in Hollywood. It's tragic, really. This, like, it's, it's not even just about his victims. It's it, doing this so publicly and Hollywood tapping on the shoulders and kind of protecting him, it sends out a statement to everyone that his behavior is acceptable and something that 
is being allowed and not being not even just being allowed being praised and i it's like harvey weinstein everyone knew about him but they keep kept having him in movies and working with people and just kept on letting him doing like kept on letting him do what he did and the thing about Woody Allen is, as I said before, I never really watched his movies. So I don't have a connection with them, unlike the others that I've mentioned. So I'm probably never gonna watch them. Because I can't watch them without... <sighs> I can't watch them without thinking about what he did and how disgusting he is and how well respected he still is in Hollywood. It's absolutely disgusting. I'm sorry. I'm going to finish off with a person that is not as horrible in any way. And that is Stanley Kubrick. And the reason why I wanted to mention him is because he's so idolized. With kind of good reason, because his mo all his movies are instant classics, basically. He is dead also, so he can't speak. He can't defend himself. But the thing that I'm gonna, that I find kind of disturbing came out when he was alive and still doing movies. And that is, and also his, I, I think he must have been like bipolar or something because he was explained as very, very manic and crazy, uh, people in the business. So I do think he has some kind of bipolar or BPD or something. But that does not excuse shitty behavior, don't get me wrong. And the thing that I kind of like, I really didn't feel comfortable with him was the way he treated Shelley Duvall on the set of The Shining. And The Shining is one of my favorite movies, I think top five favorite movies and absolutely one of the best horror movies of all time. It's also a great book by Stephen King. But he like quite literally mentally abused her the entire filming of The Shining. Like, the, during the entire filming. And it got so bad that she had, like, a mental breakdown afterwards and quit acting. Because it, he was just so terrible towards her. And I've heard people excuse it, like, yeah, but it became such a good movie and you can really see that she's very distressed. And I'm like, she's an actor. She shouldn't be bullied into having a real reaction. He didn't bully Jack Nicholson and he did still a fantastic job. I don't believe that she wouldn't have done a good job without being abused. A good director can tell someone and help them get there with words without mentally abusing someone. I, I don't think that's... That's kind of like when hitting a dog or hitting your kid when they're doing something wrong. That's not the right way of teaching them something. <sighs> Anyways, the movies that I love with him, I'm always gonna love and keep on watching are basically <laughs> all of them. I mean, oh, there's so many good movies and the best of them like The Shining, 2001, Eyes Wide Shut, I mean, A Clockwork Orange. He's Clockwork Orange. I'm sorry. <laughs> so basically what I'm saying is that I'm not going to keep supporting the actors and directors that I've mentioned uh, and their work. Uh, but I'm going to keep watching the movies I've already fallen in love with. Uh, I'm also not going to go around saying that Brad Pitt is my favorite actor or Woody Allen is a great director or was my favorite director. But I am going to say that Seven is an amazing movie and that Annie Hall has won awards, I guess. <laughs> um, I will link every all of the information that I've read and also the first link is going to be on a really good article about the um, about Hollywood and how they protect their own through money and power. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye!